Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's very exciting indeed because I finally managed to purchase myself one of these, an ATM Mini. And what this does, it allows you to plug in up to four HDMI sources. And those sources could be cameras, they could be computers, they could be games consoles. And you can switch between those sources and mix between those sources and output to HDMI for live use or recording. And you can output from this device to a computer over USB and the computer will see this device as a 1080p webcam. So this is a very useful device if you're making videos and want to switch between HDMI sources, but it's also useful for live streaming and improving your video conferencing. And given that lots more people are doing video conferencing these days, this makes this a very useful device indeed. So uh, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have my lovely new a10 Mini, which as you can see is made by Blackmagic Design, which is the same company which publishes the DaVinci Resolve video editor and makes all kinds of professional video equipment, including uh, this, the Video Assist 4K, which I use for recording a lot of the content on this channel. And uh, in case you're wondering, the A10 Mini costs $295 or £245, which I think is amazing given the functionality you get, as we'll see in this video. And it's worth pointing out there are other versions of the A10 Mini, such as the A10 Mini Pro for about double the price, which also features recording and a hardware streaming engine. But the A10 Mini does all I need, so this is the one I've got. So let's get inside. Let's first of all get off all the shrink wrap, which is slightly damaged already, I think, but hopefully get it off. Oh, it's nice and easy. Didn't even need any tools for that. There we are, got in there. And I think the box therefore just now opens Yes, like that. There we are. I can get inside. Honestly, there we are. Let's do that and uh, that and that. Oh, it says welcome. We're the wrong way around. There's a welcome there. And uh, that must be the power supply and various country adapters. And if we go in here, yes, there we have the, uh, the A10 Mini. Oh, it's a good weight to it. I like a device with a good bit of weight to it. Let's uh, put it down there and uh, Let's uh, cut in for a, a closer shot. And uh, as you can see, we've got loads of controls, loads of buttons on this device, although you can also control it via a computer. Basically here we've got the four HDMI inputs with buttons to uh, switch between them. Those are good solid buttons. We've got audio controls for each HDMI input there as well. We've got picture-in-picture -picture controls, effects controls for mixes, controls for keying. You can do green screen with this device as well. And if I show you connectivity, let's look around the back. There it is. Look, all the ways of connecting things in. We've got four HDMI inputs, HDMI output, a couple of microphone inputs, 3.5 millimeter mic inputs, if you want to use those. Webcam output over USB, although you can also use that to control device using the control software. We'll look at it a bit later in the video. And then we've got control over Ethernet if you want to do really complicated things. And of course, power input, because without power, the thing won't work. So uh, there we are, the A10 Mini, a very welcome addition to my video equipment. So I think it's now high time to put this thing to the test. Right, I've now got the A10 Mini all connected up and working. We've got power going in here, USB-C going to my laptop so it can appear as a webcam. We've got the HDMI output go into my Blackmagic Design Video Assist 4K to record what you're seeing here. And we've got three HDMI inputs from the camera, which is actually recording this shot from another camera and from a computer. And so what I can do, I could press, for example, number two here. You'll see number one is currently illuminated. Press number two, we've got the output from camera two. We can go back to camera one and camera two and camera one. You could play with that for hours. And uh, we've got the computer on number three over there. You can see the output from my laptop. Move the thing around. There we are. That's from my laptop. And back to camera two and uh, back to camera one. And uh, if I flick across to the computer again and then make an instantaneous change to our recording setup like this, so we're now recording the computer directly rather than the computer through the switcher, what I'm going to do is to show you how the uh, ATM Mini is appearing as a webcam to the computer. So here we are in a Google Meet, but it could be Skype or Microsoft Teams or Zoom 
or whatever, and we'll do a new meeting and a start and instant meeting, and hopefully you'll pick up the ATM Mini as the webcam, as the camera, and uh, it has. And of course the output here is rather strange because the uh, output is actually the computer's own screen. This is why I changed the recording setup for this segment. If I press one on the switcher, you can see that as a camera one, there's camera two. We're switching as before, and the output is clearly appearing as a webcam, which can be used in this Google Meet call, or a Zoom call, a Skype call, whatever it happens to be. So clearly you can use the ATM Mini to do this uh, nice switching when you're doing a, a video conference or a web call. You might have noticed the image here is flipped, it is, and that's just because in Google Meet and Skype and other things, the software insists on showing you the image of yourself flipped over in the preview. It doesn't output it like this. I wish it wouldn't do it, but uh, that's the way things are. Anyway, let's flip back to a shot of the unit itself so I can tell you about how audio works. And as you can see above each of the big channel switching buttons, we have six audio controls. Two of these offer controlling level, which you can do here if you wish to, although I can't imagine I ever will. One is a reset button, but the three critical buttons are on and off and the AFV or audio follows video. So as you can see at the moment, audio is turned on for channel one and off for channels two and three and indeed four. So even if I flick to a camera two, the audio is still coming from a camera one because its audio is on and the others are off. But uh, I could switch on the audio for a camera two and uh, turn it off for camera one. You've probably got rather poor audio now because uh, you're hearing me through the internal microphones on the second camera. Let's flip back again. There we are, audio is now back from uh, camera one or source one. And the other function here is to use what's called AVF, audio follows video, which I just mentioned. We do that, like that. Nothing's changed there, but if I now flick to camera two, It'll take the audio from a camera two, and now back to the audio from a camera one. And I think although I'll flick back to a audio from channel one, turn that off, that I think is how I would normally work with this type of device. But it could well be, for example, you've got some computer audio output which you want to use with your own narration, so you might use the audio from different channels on different occasions. And you've got reasonable control here, but you've got far more audio control in the software we'll look at later in the video. Greetings, here I am back again. I thought we'd now take a look at the picture-in-picture -picture and transitions functionality on the ATEM Mini. And things are connected up here just as they were in the previous segment, but I thought we'd take a copy of the output of the unit and put it up there on the corner of the screen so you can continue to see me pressing buttons. So as I press buttons, you can see what I'm pressing and uh, what's coming out from the unit. And uh, if you're wondering what happens if we press them before, nothing's connected, you've got a null output, you just get black. But uh, what you're seeing here when I press a button, as we saw previously, is a straight cut. But you might want to do a transition. If you can go over here to uh, Auto Transition, the default is Mix for one second. If I now press number one, it'll mix to that. For, and we can mix the computer, mix back there again. We could do it for longer, do two seconds. It takes longer to do a, a mix, that's rather nice, isn't it? And there's other things we can use as well. There's some beautiful wipes. We can wipe like that, or we can wipe uh, like that. Very Star Wars, isn't it, wipes like that? I do love the uh, wipe across like that. And we've also got um, some uh, sort of DVE type effects. That's a slide, I think it is. That's a squeeze. Uh, so, uh, and we can dip to a color if we want, that'll go to white and, uh, and back again. So we've got all sorts of transition functionality. And again, you've got certain things pre-programmed here on the unit when you're not using the software. When you are using the software, you can control exactly what's going to happen here. Also on the top here, we've got picture in picture. We could turn that on. Picture in picture will do, as you can see there, it puts input one in a position there at the top of the screen. We can flick it around like that. And again, you've got control over these. If you use the software, I'll show you in a minute. We've also got a Kia here, which I'll show you when we are in the software, because you really need the software to control that. We can go to black like that. That's just basically another output that gives us black. Oh, we've also got down here a fade to black button, so at the end of things you can press this, very professionally draw things to a close, and avoid that a moment when no one quite knows who should turn their webcam off first. So, here I am back again. We've now got this shot of the A10 Mini on the input 2, because on input 1 we've got this, a shot of a wooden elephant on a, a green background, and still on the input three, we've got my uh, laptop, 
which is now running uh, this software, the uh, Blackmagic Design A10 control software, which is communicating with the A10 Mini over its USB connection. And it's worth pointing out, this is not just a software for the A10 Mini, but the software used with all Blackmagic Design A10 switches, including their highest end broadcast models. Oh, and if you think the controls and the fonts here are a bit small, they certainly are. I've had to reduce the uh, Windows scale factor on my laptop quite considerably to get everything to run here on the screen. Anyway, what we have here is a uh, various control tabs, and the first tab here is a switcher, which resembles a professional vision mixing desk. And uh, what this does is to duplicate the buttons on the A10 Mini itself, as well as adding more controls. For example, uh, here we've got a button which will bring up color bars. If I press that, we've got a uh, color bars on the screen. Let's go back to the uh, where we are output there from the computer. And uh, we've also got here a great big slider. If we just set things up like that, I could use this slider to uh, manually control the transition to our shot of the elephant. You've got to have a nice shot of an elephant on a green background, haven't you? We always like shots of uh, elephants on green backgrounds in uh, explaining computers videos. Next across in terms of tabs, we've got this, which is a media player where you can load in still images to use as backgrounds, as a overlay graphics, if they've got an alpha channel, things like that. So if we go back to the switcher screen here, you'll see here's a button to bring up the graphic. I'll press that and uh, there's our picture of Mr. Scissors. I'll go back to uh, computer output. Or if we go back to the shot of the mixer itself there, you might remember on this, there's a little button labeled still. If I now press the button labeled still, it brings up Mr. Scissors. He gets it everywhere, doesn't it? Let's go back to the shot from the computer. Next across in the tabs, we've got this, which is an uh, audio mixer. For you can do it, all your audio control is here. That gives you lots of audio control. I think this is a Fairlight audio mixer. Same thing you get if you're using the DaVinci Resolve video editor, all highly integrated from Blackmagic Design. And uh, talking of which, we've also got a tab here for a camera control. If you happen to be using Blackmagic Design cameras, you can color balance them, do all that stuff using this software and uh, the ATEM Mini. Anyway, let's go back to the uh, switcher screen. I want to show you a few things here. First of which is chroma key, which I mentioned I'd show you earlier. And uh, we go across to the chroma tab. This is where you set it all up. You select the color. You can do various uh, corrections to get a good key. I've not got a brilliant key here, but at least I can show you things working. So uh, if I just uh, go back maybe to the shot of the unit itself, let's do uh, that if I can remember where I am. I'm getting very confused making this video. And now if I go up here to key and press on, there's the shot of the elephant. Isn't that marvelous? The elephants come up via a chroma key. And uh, if we go maybe to uh, the shot of the computer, and we we'll bring it up again, we can now use the slider here to transition that. Isn't that lovely? Look, it's a bit like, a, it's just like a Energize, isn't it? The Enterprise Energize, and we can go, there's the elephant. Isn't it amazing what we use all this really complicated uh, equipment for? But uh, anyway, let's for now turn the elephant off. I'll turn it off on the here like uh, that. The other thing I want to show you is that over here, we've got all the controls for all the things we were using earlier on the buttons on the device. If we go across to a DVE, Digital Video Effects, you'll see, for example, down here, here's all the different things we could use to set up the mixes. And uh, at the top here, I've set up a picture in picture. So again, if we go back to the shot of the mixer itself, and if I now turn on picture in picture as we used previously, you'll see our picture is uh, rather different to the one we saw previously. I've changed the size, the position, I've added a border doing that. Again, I can show you that. Let's just go back to uh, that and turn picture in picture back on. You can see over here, here's all the controls. Here, for example, is the uh, outer border control. We could have a very large border. I think that's a bit big. We'll leave it like that. Anyway, let's finish off with a shot of the A10 Mini itself, which, as I'm sure you'd agree, is a really amazing piece of uh, computing equipment. In the classic film, Back to the Future, Doc Brown describes a 1985 camcorder as a portable television studio. For some reason, I've always remembered that, but I would say today that a portable television studio is one of these, an A10 Mini, which I think is an amazing device. And this can do, in a small box for a comparatively small amount of money, more than you could do in the studio gallery of many TV studios not that many years or, or decades ago. 
we've got a mixing and switching between high definition video inputs. We've got digital video effects. We've got audio mixing. We've got chroma keying. All of that in this very small space. And in a world in which more and more people are making videos and communicating via video, this has to be a fantastic device. You probably gathered I'm rather pleased to have bought an A10 Mini. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.